Father God, I need for my neighbor to have a financial breakthrough. Father God, I need for my other neighbor to be healed in their body. Father God, I need you to rebuke diabetes right now. Father God, I need you to rebuke stroke right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I need you to rebuke hypertension right now. Father God, I need you to touch joints, God in the name of Jesus. For my other neighbor, I need you just to touch their mind. They've been crying all week. My neighbor lost a loved one and I need you to be their strength right now. I need you to be the lift of their head and let them know that you'll never leave nor forsake them. For my other neighbor, God, I just need you to provide transportation. 
because they're looking for this new job and with it, they need transportation. So it may seem simple, God, I need you to open a way for them out of no way. For my other neighbor, I need you to help their unbelief that they'll just have faith in you, God. That they'll believe that you're a great God. And Father God, as you're blessing them, I need you to touch me right now. I need you to be glorified in my life, God. I need you to be exalted and adored, God. I need you to be celebrated in my life, God. Touch my family. Touch my children. Touch on my heart, God. And you do it right now in the name of Jesus. And as we let our neighbor's hands along, we let our neighbor's hands go, I ask that you be glorified in this place. And we put our hands together and we open our mouths, God. And we open our mouths and we celebrate you right now, Lord. Because there's no one like you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we give your name glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. How many know that our God is greater? There's no one like you, hey. none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Thank you.
Come on, boy.
Let the wind. 
You are the King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. There is none like you. No matter where we search, no matter what we look for, no matter where we put our time, God, you've been faithful. And for this, we give you praise. We ask now that you be in this service, in the midst of these, your people, that we would open our ears to hear from you, open our eyes that we would see you, open our hearts to receive, and God, a mind to believe. God, let us be the vessel you called us to be, that we would execute on these things and so many more. It is in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen.
who we're here for and who we are here to magnify. Amen? It is Youth Sunday. We are excited to be able to highlight some of what our youth are doing, our children, our youth. We want to train them up in the admonition of God. Amen? So I just want to have a couple of announcements. First, because it is Youth Sunday, we want to acknowledge those who work with our youth. If you are on the children and youth ministry team, that means you serve in the kids zone, the teen zone, with the praise dance ministry, with the youth choir, anything related to magnifying our God and teaching our children how to do the same. I want you to stand up right now, amen? All of those who work with our children and our youth, amen! Amen, yes, yes, yes! We praise God for you and for your service. Somebody said, what's going on with Sister Kenya? Did she have too much coffee this morning? You know, what's going on? Too many wah-wah runs? You know. I'm just excited to be able to thank God for all that he has done, not only in my life, but in the life of this church. Amen. Amen. And when I think about him and all that he's done, I cannot contain myself. Amen. Amen. All right, we do have a couple of announcements. We will keep these short. We want to encourage everyone. If you want to know what's going on in the life of your church, you can do several things. One, you can get on our website and look at the events calendar. We post everything that is happening in the life of the church. On that events calendar, you can go to d2ic.org. Amen. You can also sign up to make sure you get the e-blast, weekly e-blast. We will send you announcements directly to your email. You will see the most important announcements for the week and what's coming up. Please sign up and get the e-blast if you don't already have it. Amen. You can do that by sending a simple message to info at d2ic.org, info at d2ic.org, and put in the subject line, add me to the e-blast. Amen. Amen. We want to make sure you get those announcements. All right. You can also, of course, after service, you can go to a welcome table and you can ask um, for follow-up there, but we have a lot of things going on. First and foremost, we, of course, want to remind everybody that our praise, our worship, our being able to lift up God's holy name does not stop on Sunday. It just begins. Amen? So we want to remind everybody to come back as a community on Wednesday. You could do that in two ways. You can join us for our corporate prayer line that begins at 6 a.m. We have a line where we reconnect, we pray with God, we um, hear a mighty word, and it's all done very uh, early, but very quickly to give us that power before we begin our day, amen? So we want to invite you to become a part of that prayer line at 6 a.m. on Wednesday mornings. Um, you can also come back right here Wednesday evenings at 6.30. We have God Talks. That is our midweek uh, Bible study opportunity, our time to recharge, to reconnect with God to learn more about his word and what he is telling us through his word. So we want to invite everybody to come back right here, 6.30 is on Wednesday, for God Talks. So what else is going on? Okay. So yes, our 11 a.m. worship is back. We want to continue to spread the news. We uh, took a uh, break during the summer to allow our teams to recharge. We have a consolidated service, but they're back. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, 11 a.m., 11 a.m., 11 a.m., it's back, y'all, it's back, okay? The 11 a.m. service, 11 a.m. worship service is back. Um, we have new members orientation, so if you are a new member, that means you recently joined the church. This is your opportunity to learn more about Dare to Imagine and to begin to understand more about the fellowship that you are a part of. We are, we are encouraging all of our new members to come and join us for new members orientation. That will be October the 7th, that is next Sunday. We are uh, launching our first HBCU college bus tour. Amen? HBCUs, any HBCU alums in the house? Yes, I see your hands, I see you. Yes, we are taking teenagers. These are folks who are in high school between 9th and 12th grade. We are taking a trip October 25th to the 27th. That's around the corner. Um, we are going to be uh, touring several mid-Atlantic HBCUs. Um, starting with Morgan State, going through Bowie State, going to Ham Howard University, we're going to Norfolk State, and we will end at Hampton University at their homecoming, amen? So if you want to join us, or you know a youth that should, that could benefit from the exposure, please go by the HBCU table, 
They have a table set up where they are registering participants for our HBCU tour. Amen? Amen. It's Youth Sunday, and we want to make sure our youth have the opportunity to go higher, to be successful, to be all that God has a vision for them to be. Amen? So if you know of somebody who could be a part of that tour, or should be a part of that tour, please come and encourage them to sign up. Amen? All right, now it's giving time. It's giving time. Yes, how can we honor God? We can honor God by beginning, beginning, just beginning, yes. Beginning to pay him back for all that he has done for us. Every ministry, every outreach, every uh, opportunity that we have to interact with our community is really based upon the tithes and offerings that we have here at the church. So it is your tithes, your offerings that allow us to do all of this great work, amen? It allows us to help pay the costs associated with the HBCU bus tour. It allows us to do all these great ministry events. So please, we encourage you to give. You could do this many ways. We encourage you to give like how Pastor and I give. We can give via push pay. And you can join PushPay by uh, going to your app store and adding the PushPay app, amen? Or you can just simply text D2I Church, D2I Church, text D2I Church to the number 77977. D2I Church to 77977. If anybody needs technical assistance, and many of us do, amen, praise God, amen. We're happy to help you to do that as well. Just come see us after service. We can help you if you need assistance in loading up push pay or anything else. Of course, you can also give via our website. You can give by pressing give on the D2I app. And you can, of course, give right here, right now by just simply putting um, your offering in an envelope and our ushers will be happy to receive it for you. You just raise your hand if you need an envelope and they will assist you. All right, are we ready, y'all? We're gonna get back to worship. Praise God.
Dear God, we're just grateful, God, to be able to be in this, your presence, God. We thank you, God, for the ability, God, to pour back into your ministry, God. We thank you, God, for all of these tithes, all these offerings, all of these gifts, God, that have been given, God, in your name, God. May they be used, God, for the upliftment of your name, God. May they be used, God, for your glory, God. May somebody, God, we don't even know who they are, God, but by these gifts, God, may souls be saved, folks be touched, and by people be connected to you, God. We thank you, God, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all, God, that we know that you will do. May you receive all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Amen. Amen. Our pastor, my beloved, Pastor KJ, amen. Let's give it up for Pastor KJ. Amen, yes. We praise God for our pastor. He is in Charlotte, North Carolina. He is worshiping God at the Elevation Church, one of the most progressive, profound, love-focused Christian ministries here, forward-thinking Christian ministries in the nation. He is down there. He has brought um, Brother Wesley, who is our leader, over our video sound lighting and production team. They are down there learning, amen? Amen, they are learning, they are communing with God. Our pastor is being replenished, amen? As he continues to unveil the vision, the ministry God has given to him, uh, he is going and communing God with the ministries and the pastor there, Stephen Furtick, who, who again is, is uh, nationally renowned. Um, and we just wanna pray for them. Pray that God, of course, brings him back here safely, but we know that he is going to be sharing with us all of the great um, nuggets of wisdom that have been laid, not only by those ministers and servants that are serving there at the Elevation Church, but he is having the opportunity to hear more from God, amen, and to replenish um, and learn more about what God may have for us to do here at Dare to Imagine. So let's pray for Pastor KJ, Brother Wesley, that God will bring them back here, and we look forward to hearing more from them. We have a mighty preacher in the house today, amen? Amen, yes, yes. While Pastor KJ is traveling, he of course um, knew that um, he was going to need to be able to call upon those who were able to be able to bring that mighty word, amen? So we have a mighty woman of God in the house today who has been prepared, amen, prepared and anointed uh, to be able to deliver the word, God, and we thank God for her and her ministry. Her name is Reverend Carolyn Cavanis, amen, praise God, amen. We are so grateful for her, amen. She has an extensive uh, bio, but this is what I am going to say. One, she's a friend. She's a friend of this ministry. We remember Reverend Carolyn Cavanaugh and all that she had done as we were uh, launching Dare to Imagine at First District Plaza, 3801. Many of you were there, but it was really Reverend Car Carolyn Cavanaugh who allowed us to be able to execute, to be able to open our doors there at 3801. We will always be grateful for all that she did behind the scenes that many did not see to ensure that we were able to be there, we were able to worship God, that we were able to lift up his holy name every week. So we praise God for her because she does have the gift of administration in addition to her um, mighty, powerful uh, ability to bring God's word. She is studied. She is trained. Can somebody say trained? Yes, the word says study to show thyself approved unto God, a work man or woman who needeth not be ashamed. Amen. So she is studied. She is a graduate of Barnard College at Columbia University. Can somebody say amen? Amen. She is also a graduate. She has her Master of Divinity degree from the Union Theological Seminary. That's also there in New York, right there by Columbia University. She is um, very experienced. She has been um, working in church in the uh, AME tradition for most of her life. And some may say, well, Reverend Carolyn Cavanaugh, this is you Sunday. Well, Reverend Carolyn Cavanis was called to preach and has been preaching since the age of 16. Can somebody say 16? Amen. 
So she knows what it's like to be able to be in the ministry, to have God's call upon your life at such a young age. And we look forward to hearing what she may have to say and may, what she may pour into our youth. So let's stretch out our hands, dare to imagine, dare to imagine or paid up to me, Carolyn Cavanis is your woman of God. We ask you, God, to touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Be with Reverend Cavanis. Be with Reverend Cavanis. Be with Reverend Cavanis. Amen. Amen. The next voice that you will hear after our youth minister to us and dance will be that of the Reverend Carolyn Cavanis. We thank God for her. Amen. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Create in me a clean.
in the person of the Reverend Dr. Kevin Johnson. Let's give God praise for Dr. Johnson and certainly to Sister Kim. We praise God for both of you and for your children, for being sold out, for allowing the Lord to lead you. And so we thank you for being an example of taking a walking out on faith. Let the church say amen. Certainly to all the ministers and those who stand in place of leadership here in this historic house of worship, we praise God for you. Certainly to our young ladies who ministered this morning, let's give God praise one more time for them. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for lifting us. What a wonderful change of this music ministry. And let us go to work. Amen. In the gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Beginning at the 13th verse, and we do bring you greetings from the Bethlehem Church of Idaho on the main line. And so they're a little mad at me. They thought I was going to be there this morning, but I said, they don't know I'm here. Let the church say amen. Um, <laughs> um, but you got to do what you got to do. Let the church say amen one more time. Uh, Matthew 14, uh, 13. Thank you for your hospitality. Um, here we are. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there on a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. Turn to somebody and say, shift out of yourself. Find somebody else and say, shift out of yourself. And let's put our hands together for the Lord. Shift out of yourself. Absolutely love Jesus. It's probably an oxymoron because you're a preacher, you're supposed to love Jesus, but that ain't necessarily true. I love him because how he is able to manage his ability and the personality of being both human and divine at the same time. That Jesus' life, his humane part, shows and is emblematic and reflects for me as to how it gives me some pointers, gives me a guide, gives me a roadmap, gives me some instructions as to handle life that is no crystal stair. That there's absolutely nothing in our lives that does not parallel what Jesus went through in his own. Jesus is just coming into the world called some controversy. Jesus is rearing and Jesus even now coming out publicly to declare and to go forward in the ministry that has been set apart for his life. That here Jesus even having to pick a group of people, associates, acquaintances, and trainees, employees that he would go about teaching in order that they could continue the work and how he had put so much into them. But that they would even, if you consider the cross, that it would only be one of them that would be there until that very doubtful day. That, that, that Jesus' life, even in how he manages pain and how he manages disappointment. And that is where we plant ourselves this morning here. And we find in particular how the chapter 14 of Matthew, which is most noted as the chapter which gives us the miracle of divine multiplication. How Jesus feeds 5,000, which is really in fact 10,000 when we include the women and the children. How Jesus took five pieces of catfish and two, sorry, two catfish and five cornbread biscuits, y'all, and turned it into food for the multitude. Any good biblical scholar, any good reader of the Bible, any good person who reads a good book, it, it's certainly good to pick out the scene and there's certainly the good part, but it's also very interesting to consider what happened before and what happened after that great miracle took place. 
See, the miracle of the 5,000, the feeding of the 5,000, as scholars suggest it to be called, that it comes on the heels of Jesus getting the dreadful news that his cousin, his MC, his, his hype man, his precursor, his, his, his bosom one, the one that even when they were both in their mama's room, they, they connected, they had a leap for joy, that, that, that Jesus gets the news that John the Baptist, the voice that was crying out, in the wilderness, uh, preparing the way of the Lord, uh, that here Jesus gets the news uh, that the one who said uh, that I am not worthy to even untie your sandals uh, is now been beheaded uh, by a regime uh, that is more concerned about himself uh, than rather the good of the entire empire. Does that sound a little bit familiar, y'all, uh, as to where we find ourselves uh, in these United States? of America. Uh, let me go on uh, that here Jesus uh, gets the news uh, that his BFF, uh, his road dog uh, is dead. Uh, that here is Jesus uh, having to come to terms uh, that somebody he loves so much uh, has been taken out of the place uh, that has been taken without just cause. Uh, that here Jesus uh, comes to terms uh, that John the Baptist uh, is dead. Uh, he's not on a cruise He's not in a foreign country, but John the Baptist is dead. And some of us know that feeling like what Jesus had when you get bad news, when the report doesn't go your way, when people abandon you, when you thought they loved you, but they were really using you, when you had to bury your mama, bury your daddy, bury your dreams, but you find yourself you want to take a personal day. You need some time to get yourself together because this really hurts on the inside. Do I have a witness in the building that knows something about being hurt, being disappointed, being depressed, being down under, being disturbed, being taken out, being counted out, feeling that there is no Realize that this thing is bigger than you. 
way. I made a decision, y'all, a long time ago that when trouble comes my way, it's not going to paralyze me, but it's going to empower me. That it's not going to put me down, but I'm going to allow it to, to lift me up. Yet though they slay me, yet will I trust him. I, I made a decision, y'all, that I'm not going to let it get the best of me. Because I'm going to work and ask God to make a way out of no way. Family, let me get out of here now. That I'm so glad that Jesus had a shift and he saw that this thing was bigger than his feelings. See, friends, if you get caught up in your emotions, you are hurting God's program. You are getting in the way of what God has for you. See, what God has for you, it is for you. And I'm so glad that Jesus had a shift all that he was able to get over the death, that he was able to not allow it to, to paralyze him, but he saw it as an opportunity to bless somebody else. Let me get out of here now. I want to tell you there to imagine that, yes, there will be some good days. watching on CNN and NBC get the best of us. See, you could be in the White House, but we know the man who's in the lighthouse. You may think you got all power, but I serve him, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that the government shall be upon his shoulder, that he is the wonderful counselor. And so 45, do what you want, but I know that the end of the day, that there is somebody much bigger, much greater, much stronger than you and I. And so church, let's keep on serving. Let's keep on feeding. Let's keep on teaching. Let's keep on shifting. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man what God has in store for his people. Shake somebody by the hand. Shift it This is bigger than me. I'm almost certain, y'all, that yes, Jesus, he healed some people. Yes, he gave sight to the blind. Yes, he raised some people from the dead. Yes, he gave the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. Yes, he came to upset some folk. But there ain't nothing like feeding black folk. And I'm almost certain, y'all, that Jesus' popularity ratings went way up that day because he took the time to feed those people. I'm getting out of here now, y'all. But I just want to tell somebody uh, that you give witness uh, to how God, even in the midst of your pain, uh, if you would just feed uh, somebody else, uh, 
If you just give somebody uh, an encouraging word, uh, if you just give somebody uh, a little bit of wisdom that you've come to learn uh, along the way, uh, I want to tell somebody uh, that if we just feed uh, the people of God, uh, you may not know their situation, uh, but you know uh, that there is a God uh, who is able to do exceedingly uh, and abundantly above all uh, you can ask, think, uh, or imagine. Uh, and so church, I want you this week to shift out of yourself and I want you to feed somebody, even that enemy on your job. Tell them good morning. God is good all the time. God is good. Even look at your bank account. Don't know where it's going to come from. Shift out of yourself and say, God, you will make a way somehow, even in your service. I want you to shift out of yourself. You may have never done it before, but behold, any man who's in Christ is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, that which is new. Do I have anybody in the building that will get on your feet and say, God, I'm going to shift out of myself, not my will, but Place here today. Have your way. 
You could not sit there and just listen to the word. You knew that when Reverend Carolyn was preaching, that she was preaching directly to you. Amen. Take it out of me. 